So we've been planning this for how long? Oh my gosh, we've been talking about it since probably January. Yes. We're, you're like, hey, Nolan, just as long as we can do it before April. And today is, this is uh, Tuesday the 9th. So this is April 9th. You're like, hey, if we can just do it before April, we'll be good. I'm like, yeah, that's great. I'm having a baby April 10th and you can go and we'll get it before you start actually turkey hunting. We can get everybody yeah. fired up. And no, you've been to where this year? Uh, I have been to Mississippi, Alabama, Texas, and then here at home in Louisiana. Mm. So you caught me on a rainy day. Yeah. That's the only reason you got me. It's raining. So <laughs> the Lord provides. <laughs> so how many turkeys have you actually killed? Uh, me just one, just one, just the one, one with you and your uh, wife or did your wife kill? No, my one? wife shot one the other day on opening morning, in Louisiana. Nice. And then my oldest son killed one, um, uh, opening day of excuse me not opening day no was it opening day i can't remember it was opening day of youth season um and then my youngest son killed one in alabama um a couple weeks ago on their youth season so and then i just got back from texas where i finally killed one myself and um you know went with several buddies out there and stacked them up as you can do in texas yeah, y'all smacked so, them i yeah, saw did, that we picture. did all right i got super right. jealous until i knew we'd get to talk about it here and i'm like kill them all son yeah. so everyone listening i have my friend jordan summit with strut commander buck commander duck commander bronco commander <laughs> sitka command all of he does everything but uh tell us a little bit about yourself and i want to hear about strut commander we're here to talk about turkeys but yeah uh, i want to know about you some yeah, man. Um, I've been working at, at Buck Commander. Uh, I'm the main camera guy for Buck Commander, and then I've got two other guys that, that work with me that uh, they do an incredible job on the show, and I kind of handle the social media side of things. We all film content and everything, but um, I've been doing that for about 18 years, uh, working at Buck Commander. And uh, anyway, uh, kind of learn, learned a lot about turkey hunting and just grew to be really just in love with it. Yeah. um about 10 15 years ago and uh, you know once we once we got to a point where you know it was time to kind of extend the brands uh willie finally I, i'd been begging willie for a long time i said man i really want to do like turkey commander like that would be so cool and willie was like man it's in the plans it's in the plans but you know let's get buck commander off and going you know and uh anyway kind of kind of at the peak of when duck dynasty was you know just you couldn't go anywhere without seeing duck dynasty something uh you know we decided hey this would be a good time to kind of launch our fin commander and strut commander brands and uh we had a little show called commander life and that was kind of the launch of it, it was me and another guy a uh, good friend of mine M mike miller uh, they know they call him mike miller the turkey killer and uh, mikey kind of took me under his wing and and i had turkey hunted a little bit but not really to the extent um that mikey does it and uh, mikey literally like march 1st he checks out and he is turkey hunting all spring and then may 30th when it is over he's back home fishing so um mikey taught me everything i know and uh i'll, I'll just always be grateful to him for that but um yeah so we we kicked off strut commander and um been doing that since 2014 wow and uh here we are right here talking about turkeys today so it's doing all right a lot the world spins a lot and a lot of things happens between then and now i remember seeing that i think i even told you i remember seeing that first video of you i think you are in florida with you and mikey mm -hmm. y'all are down there and i've never seen him before and i don't even think i really knew you like maybe a little bit from church but i didn't know you that well but you were down there and he was putting you on a, putting you on a bird and i think y'all killed one and you may know the video i'm talking about i don't know but it was you look like a child like it was it was uh, a while back yeah, it's probably when we doubled up down there M maybe and uh that dude looked like a werewolf and big oh, yeah. had a he's, baby he, he's a scary human being if you've never met him and he like, runs a camera he does <laughs> is, is very he good? good at it too. is he really oh yeah he's good dude he's good that's awesome oh, he was mikey. he was mikey i met him actually on my very first trip down here to louisiana when i had come to kind of job shadow yeah mikey was running camera freelance for duck commander at the time um he had been running camera for buck gardner uh, i don't think you oh, know yeah. who that is but but he had been filming for buck gardner and Phil and them brought him in to, to film some ducks, and I came in, and we stayed in a little trailer out there by Phil's house together. And, you know, Mikey, back then, he didn't he wasn't near as scary looking and uh, had short beard and short hair. And, 
you know, he had told me all about his turkey escapades and just, I mean, just his infatuation with turkeys. And at the time, I wasn't a turkey hunter at all, so I had no no clue. And I'm a 21-year-old kid that just happy to be here, you know. And so I, I got a job shadowed and did all of that. And then Mikey and I grew to be good friends. And, and uh, once Buckminter got kicked off, uh, I was the one and only camera guy for like a year. And, um, you know, so like if I went up to Kansas to, to hang out with Adam LaRoach and Ryan Langerhans was there, I was the only camera guy. So like one day I would film Langy and the other day I would film Roachy and I would just flip flop. And then as you, you know, would think somebody's going to kill that I'm not with. Yeah. And so we kind of ran into that quite a bit and we would have buddies and stuff that would film just basically guys that uh that willie would pay in product he would give them t free t-shirts <laughs> and hats because we weren't making any money yeah. i was the only employee and um you know i guess i was sucking up all the money that we had but but uh you're probably getting filthy rich too aren't you <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah for sure um but anyway we got to year two and it was like man jordan can't do this on my on his own you know one you know i, I didn't have a family at the time i just just was married and but it was it was took a toll on my wife. Like I would be gone for two or three weeks at a time, and yeah. come home for a little bit. And so anyway, uh, we we ended up getting Mikey to go film Adam the Roach on a hunt. Um, I think it was in Iowa. But we, we were kind of in a bind and needed somebody, and so we called Mikey just because of our experience together uh, on the duck commander side. And he went and filmed Adam, and man, they just hit it off. Had a great relationship, and. Just got to be where the next year was like, man, we need to have a guy that's just up there that just stays at the E3 for the whole fall. And uh, Mikey was our guy. He lived kind of close, and so he just basically moved in on September 1st and then moved out January 15th. So, so where's he from originally? He's from a little town called Polo, Missouri. Okay. And uh, it's in northern Missouri. Okay. And um, anyway, so – but. Yeah, so it's it's been a long time, and he he worked with us for a long time, and and since now, you know, he's he's uh, he's gone on to do other things, and and uh, we still run into each other quite a bit, you know, during the fall, and we'll we'll bring him back to do some filming and yeah. stuff like that, and uh, I haven't got to turkey with him in a four or five years probably, but I'd I'd love to pick that back up where we left off. So always always thankful to Mikey and everything that he's taught me about the cameras, turkeys, deer great hunter good dude yeah that's what so he likes to fish a lot too though. oh my gosh if he if he likes anything more than turkey hunting it's fishing crappie crappie any, really anything he sent me a picture of a buffalo that he caught the other day <laughs> that was three feet long like i guess he snagged it or something but <laughs> yeah. man, that dude it, it was so funny <laughs> because he he kind of i wasn't a big fisherman i really still am not but everywhere that we went when i filmed him for strut commander uh he would have fishing poles and if we didn't get one goblin you know and get one killed that morning or even if we got one killed midday we were we were fishing so he would just spend all day fishing and he would you know hopefully hear a bird while he was fishing so he'd keep his shotgun and everything close and then we'd take off you know if we heard one goblin. he'd be out there hitting that hoot or that croak call oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that's awesome so you have a call here i mean you have y'all have a whole product line like we do I, I i'm i'm bad today because i don't have the full line to show you guys but uh yeah we do we we have a full line of calls friction calls mouth calls uh locator calls we got everything yeah so yeah and we're actually so again this is it's not really a last minute thing i texted you one day last week and you were were you in texas i was in texas last yeah. week yeah he, so he was in texas last week and uh, and I was like, hey, literally like a day or two before my baby gets here, what do you think about coming and doing a podcast? He's like, man, if 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 we can, I will. I don't know if we we'll have time. And uh, yeah. I text you, was it last night? I'm like, hey, if, night, if we can find time today, yeah. can we do it? And so we are. Tell them where. I mean, where are we? We are in the. I wouldn't call it the famous duck call room yeah. because this one's not famous. This mm -hmm. is uh, site B. Yeah. Um, the famous one is, is what you see the other podcast on, the Duck Call the Room. The Duck Call and, Room, yep. Uh, that, that actual call room where everything had been built for many years is now just a podcast room. Um, but this is the real Duck Call Room now that we're in. And uh, this is where Godwin and, and the guys come and build their calls. It's all set up. And it's nice. It's, it's really 
It's whatever. really clean and organized. <laughs> I know when I was here earlier, uh, Vaughn, he was with me, my little boy. He's two and just wild. Like the SKB and Yeti boxes, he's jumping off, to, off oh, top yeah. of those. That chair over there, it was over here, and he was jumping off of it. I'm like, dude, we're going to break – you're going to break yeah, a leg I, I in here. Yeah, I wouldn't say this is this is OSHA approved at all. It's pretty yeah. – uh, no, no, it is. No, it is. It absolutely is. It's very clean, very clean and organized. It's very, very clean. When you think of Duck Commander, this is what this is what you think of. It is. But no, I'm, I'm glad to be doing this. So, who all have you taken on hunts? Like, what? I guess really just kick, get the turkey season kicked off. I know you said you killed one. Your wife killed one. So your boys. I, I always start the year off trying to get the boys something. Because um, if I can get that done, then anything else is bonus. And how old are me. they? Uh, my oldest is 15, and then my youngest is nine. So, for years, uh, you know, I took my oldest. I, I would take him to Alabama or Kansas, Missouri, Texas. I mean, he's he's been all over, um, a lot more places than I'm sure other kids his age have been. But, but he's just always kind of been my hunting buddy. I, I always said when when he was born, I, I, it was kind of my dream just to have somebody that I could hunt with, um, you know, like that. And so, yeah. I, I, with him, it's just always been special and tons of memories together i mean i've been with him on his first deer and first turkeys first fish like all those things as a as a dad i'm, I'm sure you're like this too like yeah. you're looking forward to taking your son hunting and fishing and um so we've had a lot of really cool experiences together and and we've had some heartbreaks i mean it's just all all kinds of cool memories and and learning experiences and uh my youngest son you know now he's kind of step they're they're pretty far apart in age they're about six years apart in age and so He's now to that point where I get to teach him and take him places. And um, we went to Alabama this year. And uh, my older son, he, he went to Alabama. It took him four years before he could actually – he ended up getting one in Alabama, which he missed one the very first day, first trip that he went to Alabama five years ago now. And uh, and since then, it was just struggled fest. I mean, just all kinds of – issues whether it was just birds not cooperating bad weather you know just all kinds of things and then uh anyway he ended up killing one opening morning last year and uh, it was just a huge thing for me and him and and my buddy brandon that that lets us come out there and uh we were all bawling crying just because it was so it, it was just, you worked so hard for something yeah. and and to see somebody succeed like that it, it was just very special and um anyway so he was pretty proud of himself and i was super proud of him of course and and then uh this year you know he's playing high school baseball so um he he cannot travel uh really just he can't miss any games and so uh, i told him i said well you're gonna miss alabama youth you know you not be able to do it next year because he turned 16 next year and i believe i may not be 100 percent right but i believe he can't do the youth hunt anymore and Anyway, I said, "Well, I'm going to take your younger brother, <clears throat> your younger brother Slade this year." And he didn't uh, like that. Oh did he? <laughs> no, he didn't like that at all. He was like, "No, that's he's, my that's he's my." He's ready to quit baseball. That's right. He said, "That's my spot. He can't go." You know, and he kind of he got a little uh little ugly about it. He's like, "Well, I I hope he doesn't kill the first day." You know, and you know he's got to work for it too. And I was like, "Hey, you ought to be happy for your brother." And I know he was deep down, but. Uh, he wanted him to have to work for it like he did. Yeah. And um, anyway, so I took Slade this year, and uh, it, he actually did. He had to work for it. I mean, the f first morning, I think we had one at about 90 yards and just wouldn't commit. And, you know, when they're when the kids are that young or that little, you know, I, I'm not a huge decoy guy, but uh, it really helps, especially when you're filming and you got little kids. It gives something for the birds to be looking at and not have eyes on you. Yeah. And so anyway, that kind of, you know, is why we had decoys this trip. And um, in Alabama, the you can't use decoys, uh, I believe, for the first 10 days of season um, outside of the youth hunt. They do allow it for the, the special season. So if you're trying to check me there, that's it. So uh, we were able to use decoys. And um, anyway, it just didn't work out. Yeah. Didn't work out. Bird locked up, wouldn't come in. And then uh, basically – the next two or three days was just hurricane winds, rain, just the weather you do not want when you're turkey hunting. And uh, I think our final day, it, it was just super windy, like 20, 30 mile an hour winds. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
really wasn't expecting anything. And quite honestly, it was going to get beautiful like the next day or no, the following day. So like Wednesday. And, uh, that Monday I was like, man, I think we're just going to go home because Tuesday it's going to be a rain out and then I can't stay for Wednesday, you know, can't keep you out of school that long. And so I said, we'll go home in the morning and we'll give it one shot this evening. Well, there was one bird that we had seen on the power line, um, that had a couple of hens and, and we had a really good idea where he was roosting. Um, we'd seen him a few times and, and just never really tried to make a move on him. Um, we tried him in the mornings, but it just didn't work out. And so we saw him on the power line that evening and I boogied down the power line, got a good look at him. He had his two hens and fortunately, uh, there's a road that kind of goes around the power line and then intersects with it. Well, he was headed right to that road and this, this kind of, you know, I, I want to say woodsmanship, but this is where that kind of comes into play, knowing the property and knowing the lay of the yeah. land and, and whatnot. So we boogied around, got on that road and I thought, well, if I can get close, you know, if I can beat him to that road, I might be able to call him right down that road. And man, it worked out beautifully. We, we, came around that road and I popped out and I looked and I saw a hen just crossing the road. And then I saw him full strut coming behind mm. and I was like, perfect. The hens are already ahead of him. If he hears it, you know, they're going down to where they should go roost. If I can call to him, maybe he'll just yeah slip down there. And that's exactly what happened. I took uh, my son and, and Jerry, the, who was filming, I put them kind of to the side and a few yelps and he just come strutting down the road and, Gave Slate a shot and took it, and we were, I mean, we were freaking out. Shoot, it was, I bet. It was so cool. It's exciting and when plans uh, like that go together. That does not happen often no, when you're turkey not hunting. at all. I mean, it's not a, at all. It's almost but, as rare as this eclipse we had yesterday right. or the day before. That's that right. That it was cloudy and raining, and, <laughs> but Jesus didn't come back or <laughs> whatever other conspiracies were out yeah. there. We're, we're still here, or we got left behind. It's, 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 <laughs> uh, yeah. it's, it, it just got really quiet in yep. this room. You said that uh, that you don't hunt with decoys much. What uh, What's the reason for that? I, decoys, to me, are kind of a 50-50. Either they're going to seal the deal or they're going to mess you up really? one of the two um and i'd rather i'd rather lean on them you know not messing me up like so i just don't even have them i and, and i kind of get to a point in the season um where i i've i've moved so much that i'm tired of carrying everything so it's not just decoys it's like my vest gets lighter i, I get to where i'm not even joking by the end of the season i don't have anything but the clothes on, I have a pot call in my pocket. I have a, a mouth call in my hat and then a pair of binoculars and a gun. That's it. Like, yeah. I don't have any extra weight. And so I, I move a lot. I don't sit for a long time. There's a time and a place for everything I've learned. Um, I know guys that that's all they do. They just go deer hunt them. Well, I deer hunt the whole fall. Yeah. So I ain't in it for that. Yeah. So I'm going to move to them if I can. Right. Um, but there's nothing wrong with that tactic. Yeah, it's just for sure. not for me. Yeah. So uh, I like to move and shake. Um, I've found many times that uh, I was hunting with these guys this last week, and it got to a point where it was like, okay, these turkey, we're going to end up doing more harm than good by walking around um, and slipping through the woods. These turkeys right now, it, it was so hot. They were just kind of loafing. I said, it would be better if we just got in a spot where we know they like to be, where they like to strut, and just chilled out. We got to take a nap. We take a nap. Yeah. As I've gotten older, I like to do that a little <laughs> bit more because you get worn out. And so yeah. it's it's pretty nice to get under a shade tree yeah. and take a 45-minute nap, you know, yeah. in the turkey woods. So anyway, but yeah, um, decoys outside of, you know, I, I'll keep a I'll keep a, a, a strutter fan with me. Um, I do not like to use it. I don't advocate using it on public land for sure. Yeah. But I'll keep it beside me. Um you know, if one locks up, you know, just outside of gun range, I may flash it a little bit. But uh, Texas, I use it a lot. Open country, I use it a lot. Places that I can see a long ways, I you may know, use it. Billy um, Bob's not right but around I'm the But I'm not just walking around like it's attached to my arm trying to reap them because that's uh, as fun as that can be, uh, not knocking it at all. It's just I think as I've grown as a turkey hunter, early on I was all about it. I was like, oh, this is sweet. This is the only way to hunt and – as you as you grow as a turkey hunter and, and using the calls and everything and being able to communicate with that bird 
um, you know, it's, it's a lot more special to me to be able to, to communicate with them and, and bring them in that way. So, yeah. um, anyway, but yeah, there's, there's, as long as it's legal, man, do it. I'm cool. So I, I don't recommend it on public land. There's a lot of people yeah. that, that get hurt that way. Um, I think a lot of places that they've actually banned it. So That's watch not, out for them strutter decoys. It's not a bad thing though. No, so there's the strutter no. decoys all together that you can't, you can't have on uh some states so like alabama they're they're just straight up no reaping decoys. no reaping at all so yeah. uh, i've i've i don't really know how they regulate that um whether it's a you know a full-blown strutter or those half bodies or even just having a fan i'm not real sure how they regulate that but um they just want a lot of turkeys die because of that fan um a lot more turkeys die because of that fan and um so they're they're just trying to it's it's not any kind of hate i think on the on the actual method it's more about like you know we're we're the, the bird populations are going down they're decreasing i mean it's that's been proven yeah and so they're just trying to you know create ways that it it might make it a little bit more difficult to kill a bird but also that also means that that more birds are going to flourish and, yeah. and we're going to have more birds populating later. So I'm all about it, man. I, I mean, I, it's weird. It's just as I've gotten older, like I'm more about Louisiana wouldn't upset me at all. If it, we went to a one bird state, it yeah. wouldn't at all. Uh, well, you know, like a lot our, of people probably hate me for saying that, but <laughs> we'll, we'll bleep that part out. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but uh, like up in Kansas, they went to one bird mm -hmm. and, and they also went to a, a drawing. Yes. So I, I get a landowner tag in the state of Kansas. So me, my father-in-law, and my brother-in-law, we all three get landowner tags to deer cool. hunt. But the turkeys, we get the landowner, non-resident landowner tag for that. Not anymore. You can only get a non-resident tenant tag. Hmm. And so I called Pratt, and the lady may have told me wrong. Someone listen, please comment if you think that I'm wrong here. But I called Pratt, and I'm like, hey, we have land up in Kansas. We're from Louisiana. We own land up here. I can't, I, I didn't put in for the draw, which I'm about to have a baby. I'm not going up there anyways. Like, let's just be real. I'm not turkey hunting this year, yeah. but I can't, I can't get drawn. I mean, I didn't put in for the draw, so I can't buy one over the counter. They're like, mm. not unless you're a tenant. I'm like, well, like, what do I got to do to be a tenant? She's like, well, really, you can just kind of, I wouldn't say her name, even, even if I did remember it. So I hope there's more than one girl out of that office. So she, <laughs> she doesn't get fired. She's like, well. I mean, I don't really know what all you got to do for, you know, for you. She said, but if you just like write something down that you go and you're a tenant on some ag ground up there, whether it's for cows or you know, any kind of agricultural purpose, you just get, you just lease that from your father-in-law and just have some papers showing that mm -hmm. that's all you need. Hmm. I'm like, okay, well, that's the biggest loophole in the world. Like, why yeah. would you even go? Yeah. Why would you even do that? Hmm. I don't know. So they just made it tougher, but we're loaded with turkeys up there. Are you? Even central Kansas, where we go to, it's we have not seen any kind really? of decline in population. Where are you at? In, uh, where, uh, where's your Kansas place? So the place we own is in Protection, Kansas. It's kind of like oh. south central, southwest central. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So, so like, like Medicine Lodge, we're gotcha. like, if you know where that area is, we're like an hour mm -hmm. and 10 minutes from there. And then the place closer to the central Kansas I'm talking about, this is public ground that we hunt. It's about an hour... 15 hour and 20 i guess north straight north from us but uh kinsley kansas mm -hmm. like that area so it's not too far out of dodge but we hunt that area a pretty good bit and it's it's, it's loaded it's freaking loaded well and and you know it i don't know I, I i'm not one of the game and fish people obviously but like where we're at in kansas in southeast kansas near fort scott uh i actually drew this year oh nice so so i got a tag but um you know where we hunt right there the it's gotten worse and worse every year mm. and uh honestly we don't even hunt it like we used to you know we back back when we hunted kansas you could you could kill two birds it was over the counter i think it was like 150 bucks for two you tags could, you could have two tags yep. and so we would fill our two tags you know we would do that and then we had property on the missouri side and you could kill one i think you could kill two there but they have to be like separated by a week or something like that you got week one week two and so we would go up there and, and we would kill three birds within, you know, our time there over yeah. a weekend. So it wasn't, it wasn't super hard, but, uh, we have just noticed, um, and, and we don't even hunt it anymore. Now we, we do veteran hunts out there. And then, so it really doesn't get pressure. We'll, we'll kill our, uh, six to eight birds for 
the two properties total for the year. It, it's not even like it's a bunch went, of land up there too. It, and it's it? a bunch of land. Like I mean, we've got you know four or five thousand acres yeah. up there, so that's not a lot of birds to take off. Right. Um, but we have noticed that our our Kansas birds have gotten worse and worse and worse over the years on the numbers. Um, the M- Missouri side is flourishing. Like it's going crazy. I mean, you can go to Missouri and run into a gobbler every other corner. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, they moved it to one, they made it a, a, a drawing. And, uh, you know, I think when you have it statewide like that, I think they're just making it easy. It's just like, Hey, out of fairness, we're just going to do this yeah. for everybody. Yeah. Instead of trying to say, well, this unit, you get two, this unit, you get one, this unit's a draw only. Um, I think they're just simplifying it and just saying, Hey, let's across the board, do it. Yeah. And we're going to see what areas grow the most. Yeah. I, I happened to notice last year was my first time to hope. Uh, to hunt Oklahoma and uh, it's it's now a one bird state I want to say and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong I think it was like you know certain counties had one bird certain counties had two birds there might have been a three bird I can't remember but last year was my first time to hunt it so it was one bird for the whole state so I did two separate trips to Oklahoma my first trip was actually on our way to the veteran hunt and uh, me and my brother and uh, my friend Brandon uh, we all killed that weekend, so we got our one bird. And then I had another hunt that was already playing with one of our buck commander guys um, if I hadn't have killed. And so we did our little vet trip, and then I went back out to Oklahoma, and I just filmed that time since I didn't have a tag. And that place was loaded, like loaded. And it was more in, like, central western Oklahoma, whereas where I hunted, it, it, there were birds there, but it wasn't crazy. Yeah. um you know eastern oklahoma and you know we did all get a bird but it wasn't like it was crazy you know you weren't getting run over by turkeys now when i went to the western side you were getting run over by tur- i mean we were seeing flocks of 100 150 birds Jeez. like i mean it was stupid what's the topography out there man it was kind of it, it wasn't like real it was hilly but yeah. like these huge ag fields you yeah. know on the back side of these little knolls and stuff not much trees not many trees not many trees that's how it is where we are is it and when you think of turkeys i mean just being from north louisiana you're going to think thick trees Mm -hmm. big pine trees like you're thinking swampy kind of stuff yeah that's not the case up there like turkeys and i know you've seen it in texas i think i've seen it on y'all's videos Mm -hmm. turkeys will roost on power poles oh yeah like they just need a spot to roost that's it And and if it like if you go to nebraska not all places like this are in Nebraska, but like Western Nebraska, if there is one big tree somewhere, every turkey in the county is going to be there. Like every, like there'll be 30, 40 birds up in that tree. And so, wow. you know, Kansas. I'm trying to go to Nebraska. Oh, yeah. And Nebraska is awesome. Tree. Yeah. Which they've got a, you know, they changed it where uh, I've seen their rules dramatically, you know, change over the last few years where they were three birds. You could go over there over the counter by three birds. Um, I don't remember how much it was, but you could get three birds and now then they went to two and then now it's, you can get two, but you have to put in for the drawing and they only do 10,000 tags, Mm -hmm. I believe for the allotment. And so last year I I drew, I, I, sorry, I miss said that you did not have to draw. It wasn't a drawing. They had 10,000 tags. So whoever bought, bought. Yeah. So anybody out there want to check me? There we go. There's another one. But anyway, so I bought two of the tags last year, and I bought two two for my wife. So we had had planned to go up there and do a little trip. Well, they went on sale early January. I don't think they sold out to like mid to late March last year. And so this year when it came back around to buy tags, you know, I got the email said, hey, you know, need to need to get your tags and whatnot. And I was like, oh, I got time. You know, last year I, I was day one, like getting it. Well, dude, they sold out in like a week and a half this year. Wow. Oh, it was so fast. And so now I don't even get to go to Nebraska. Mm. So You'll be buying them early next year, won't oh, you? Oh, yeah, I'll be buying them day one next year. Mm. But um, Nebraska's a super cool place, too. Um, yeah, if you find any trees out there, there's, more than likely there's turkeys there. You'll see just just this vast open area, and then you'll see like a little little clump of trees. I guarantee there's turkeys in it. Yeah. That place that Waddy and them hunt up in Montana, mm-hmm. I don't you know where it is? Mm-hmm. Uh, I know about. Okay. But. It's, I mean, they're shooting Merriam's up there. Well, I saw him 
and uh, Culpepper, they went on one of their videos. They went up there, and it's been several years ago, but it's snow. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're sitting out there, and it's just like a foot of snow out on the ground, and they're freezing their balls off out there. Yep. And these birds, they're roosted up in the tree. Dude, that would be awesome. Dude, it, I, I got to do that um, in South Dakota a few years ago. Uh, my first time going to South Dakota, I went and hunted the Black Hills on a public land hunt. And um, it was it was like a foot of snow. I was miserable. Really? Like, miserable. It was really cool. Glad I did it. Yeah. But I was miserable. And the turkeys kind of changed. You know, they went from you know, acting like spring turkeys to, like, you can still call them in and stuff. Like, the first morning, I, I it's a long story, but I had left my tag at home, and I had to have it rushed to me. But first morning, I didn't get to hunt. And so I called one in for my buddy, and it was like, or maybe a 15 minute hunt opening morning like flew off the mountain strutted right in like no okay well that's no snow on the ground there no there was a little bit then yeah. but then the snow came and so we actually ended up losing our camp because of all the snow so we couldn't even get back into our camp mm -hmm. and uh anyway we just drove around tried to find public land places and find you're, you're just eventually just kind of looking for birds because the snow was coming down so much you couldn't just go out and locate so it would just be okay there's a there's a group let's try to get around them, yeah. you know, and that type of stuff. So um, it was a lot of fun, but I, I I can honestly say that was the one and only time I hope I ever do that. Yeah. So It's a good memory, but not again. That's right. That's yeah. right. So back to like the Kansas thing, you said that it's, it's that imaginary line splitting the state up, that you have Missouri that's loaded mm -hmm. with turkeys, and then right there on y'all in Can around the E3 area, it's not. Why do you think that is? Like why is – why is Kansas not loaded with turkeys like it once was? Is and, it? and it and it truly is for us. Like you could literally call one in from Missouri into Kansas. Like that's that's how close we are. That's wild. So, same thing for deer. Like you yeah. can kill a Missouri deer in Kansas. Like we are on the line. So yeah. we've got property in both places. So, um, man, I might again. I might get a lot of hate for this, but uh, Missouri used to have what they called the one o'clock rule. You were done hunting at one o'clock. Mm -hmm. So that was, I don't know if this is true, but I had always heard it was for the mushroom hunters to go out and find morels and, you know, and, and, and to give the turkeys a break, yeah. you know, and uh, let them go roost and not be, you know, messed with and, and the hens to nest and right. do all the things turkeys do. And uh, this year they did away with that rule. And I have a theory of why they did it. Again, I may get hate for this, but let, I'm going to say let them it. hate. We just my talking. theory, my theory on this is that you know Kansas went to the to the draw only. Missouri, being the neighboring state, sees this, says, "Oh, there's going to be a lot of people that don't get a Kansas tag. What can we do to encourage more people to buy a Missouri tag over the counter? Well, we can do away with the one o'clock rule." That's my theory. It may not be right at all. They may they may be looking at those those Missouri biologists of the game and fish. They may be looking at going, man, we got so many turkeys. Let's just try it for a year. Yeah. Um. I know a game warden up there, and I know he's a big turkey hunter, big conservationist, and he's pro. I'm actually going to see him next week. I'm I'm hoping, and um, he's probably going to be in disagreement with that rule. But it now it's. Ten full hat, baby. Yeah, so it's it's just one of those things that now, you know, we can hunt, which is awesome for when we do a veteran hunt, when you kind of got a lot of pressure. And, you know, if you have one of those veterans that gets a Missouri tag and it's like, man, yeah, at 1 o'clock, we got to be done, bro. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, let's go fishing. Yeah. Let's go find mushrooms. Mikey, you know? who'll be excited. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, now I can actually, hey, let's – we're going to get it done today, you yeah. know, and – um but I think, you know, it's kind of like uh, anything else, like just because if you've got property in Missouri, you know, if you're one of the ones griping about it, uh, kind of like I am right now, if you've got property in Missouri, nobody said you have to follow that rule and, and keep hunting until dark. Like, yeah. you don't have to do that. Stop at one if you want to yeah. stop. If you're complaining about turkey numbers and we have two tags in Louisiana and you think it should be one, hey, man, just, just kill, kill one. one. Just kill one. Nobody's like, doing that, though. Nobody's doing that. They're uh -huh. like, well, I'm going to get my two, but we should go to we, one, yeah. you know? So Everybody um, needs to kill three and a half year old deer and then they yeah, shoot I mean, my, my, spike. my goal in Louisiana is to get my one bird for the year. Now, my wife and son both got one, but I also like to, you know, I, I, have, uh, I have different properties that I hunt 
um, here in Louisiana, and I don't own any of them. I don't lease any of them. I just have good friends that don't like that's better turkey hunting, and they're very kind and let me go out there and, and turkey hunt it. And so I, you know, I, I just enjoy doing that. And so and I'm not afraid to ask either. That's yeah. another we can get on that in a minute. But I got a few tips for you guys that are out there trying to find places to hunt. So if you don't like hunting public, I do not, I do not like go hunting public a ton you know i've I've been several times used to do it all you know when i first started hunting but now that i've got kids i'm like man i just feel yeah. safer you know taking them on private where i know For the sure. property and all yeah. that but yeah. um anyway so i my places that what i try to do is you know i try to break up and they're not big tracks of land either so if i've got three or four gobblers on one spot and two or three on the other and then one or two on the next one I'll take one off one, one off the other, and one off that one. Yeah. You know, and then maybe one more if, if we need a fourth one for, you know, the fourth person of my family. So, yeah. or if I got a friend coming in or something like that. But I don't wear them out because I want them to continue on. You for know? sure. Um, you know, I've even seen on one of my properties, I've, it's weird. I've seen years where there were a ton of turkeys, and I've seen years where, man, I couldn't buy a gobble. Um, two years ago at this property i bet i had four or five gobblers on this like 120 acres that like they were just staying on it and i was shocked i was like this doesn't make sense i've never had this before and then the following year there was m maybe one mm -hmm. and i didn't even I, I think i killed one off of it that year so you know things change and and yeah. and, it, and it's not just people hunting you know you got predators and uh, I think a big thing with turkey numbers in Louisiana is all this land clearing. Mm -hmm. I mean, not that it's killing turkeys, but they're moving on. They're finding other places to go roost. You have to. So, you know, they or got they they, have to. Yeah, they got to move on. So, um, there's all kinds of things that you could go to. And I know this wasn't a podcast about turkey numbers, but as I, again, as I've gotten older, I've gotten more interested in it, and and I want there to be more turkeys for my kids. Yeah. And their kids. Yeah. So. You know, you guys don't get out there and wear them out too bad. You know, think about someone else. You know, it's it's easy to get out there and get excited and be like, man, I got my one. I'm going to go back tomorrow, kill that other gobbler I've been hearing. You know, no, leave them alone. Let them breed. Yeah. Have some more here in about two years you can hunt. Yeah. That's that's hard to do. It and is. That, that, oh. It's easier now. I, I'm in the same boat you are now and have been for just a short number of years. But, dude, when we went up to Kansas that first time, and I went out there, and I'm talking about, I, w I got out of the truck, and I said, oh, 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 and that song, went, <sighs> dude, I'm telling you, yeah. like, I got the video on my phone, me and my father-in-law, we got out there, and I was standing, I think, he, he may have been sitting in the truck, and I stood out on, and this is the property we have now, and, and I stood out there, and we didn't know if there were turkeys on it, we had no idea, because, you know, turkeys, they'll be there in the wintertime, same, yeah, I guess it's yeah. probably everywhere. There'll be 5,000 turkeys eating corn up under your feeder in November and December. But guess what? March and April comes around, and them yeah. song ones, they're gone. Like oh, they're, yeah. they're nowhere to be found. Yeah. And so we knew we had birds in the area, but we just there's not, hardly no trees up there. Like mm -hmm. you have these few little shelter belts, a couple cottonwood trees along the creeks and stuff like that, which generally don't hold water. Mm -hmm. And so you just don't really know what you have. And, mm -hmm. man, we got up there, and I'm telling you, I hit that hoot out, and it was late, like right before dark. And that song gun, he struck, and then he struck, and then he struck, and then he struck. It was like five or six toms, all of them just hammering on it. And I, th I think I died for a short split, like just for a second. That, I was that so excited. That actually might be one of my favorite feelings, turkey hunting, is when you don't really know what to expect, and yeah. then you hear one, yeah. and you're like, oh, snap. Yep. This could be a good day. Yep. And uh, I, don't think, I don't think it was quite turkey season yet. I really don't remember. It's been several years ago. Regardless, the first time I actually hunted out there, it was like two o'clock in the evening, and I thought this is where you were going a while ago talking about the Oklahoma, I mean the Missouri one p.m. rule because mm -hmm. I've killed more tom more turkeys. I, I say toms, I've only killed toms, but uh, I've only I mean, I've killed more toms after lunch mm -hmm. than I have in, any morning ever. Yeah, like I've killed them in the morning times, but I've had way better luck. I don't know if it's because there's the hens are slipped off and. I don't know if there's yeah I don't they, know what they the deal is you know that, once they once they get to where the hens are out there doing their nest and going and laying eggs and whatnot or, or or building nests whatever they're doing you know they're not interested in those toms at all yeah. so they're looking for somebody who mm -hmm. is interested yeah so yeah um yeah it's 
I've had a lot of success yeah. with that, you know, I'd say 10 to 2 yeah. area, you know. Mm-hmm. I haven't had a whole lot of success in, in the post, you know, 3 o'clock. Right. You know, but I honestly, I just don't really hunt the afternoons much. I'll go roost and, and check on them, but. You know, if 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 I can't get it done by two or three o'clock, it's time to hang it up for the day for me. So, when I was in Baton Rouge last week filming for y'all, and uh, I told Jason, he was talking about, it's like, dude, this is awesome having the that uh, what's the name of the new buck ops, the Cyclops or yeah, something? Yeah, Cycloptic. Is that the Cycloptic? That's what's on the crossbow. Mm-hmm. Is that the crossbow? Yeah, scope? Cycloptic X. I yeah. think is the name of that one. That he he that him and Ryan threw me off on that. I don't know what he meant or what he said. Cycloptic X, but. He's like, man, this is going to be awesome being able to see these turkeys. Like, yeah, you'll be able to shoot them right off the roost, right <laughs> oh, in the evening time. Yeah. Shoot them, shoot them right. As soon off as they the touch roof. the ground, yeah, yeah, just don't don't even let them touch the ground. It's just still <laughs> dark. Just shoot them. But uh, that is going some cool stuff. Are you doing anything with the with the new buck ops? Man, I other than creating some content for it, I, I don't have a whole lot to do with it. Um, as far as you know, Ryan Busbus is kind of spearheading that whole thing, and it's really, really cool, really innovative. Like a lot of really cool things are going to come from that. And yeah. it, this is just the beginning. Like it's going to change the way a lot of people hunt. Um, and you could look at that a million different ways, but you know what that means, but uh, yeah, it's going to be really overall. Really cool. I think it's, about it. I think generally people are going to be positive. As soon as it hits the internet, you, people are, they're going to get mad. People yeah, are going to bicker about, and I, I think whatever. You know, this optic, if you guys haven't heard about it, 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 basically this this it's a new type of optic that allows you to see the full spectrum of color in the shooting hours of of hunting so legal shooting hours you can see you know when you get to that last 10 minutes five minutes of light all the colors kind of start turning dull and drab and grayish and and all of that and so this optic actually intensifies all the colors and so you see those greens, you see those blues, you see those reds, like every, it just helps make your, your sight through the scope yeah. more clear. Yeah. And so, um, it's not a, you know, it's not a, a device to hunt at night. You cannot use it at night. It yeah. doesn't work. And it's not night. night vision. It's, it's not, not night thermal. vision. It's not thermal. Yeah. It's not anything like that. It literally is just, uh, probably the closest thing I could even, you know, compare it to is you know we've got these video cameras yeah, that, I was about to say like one, know, one of the cameras we, up just, we've got one of these video cameras that shoots really really good low light because it it just the sensor and the the lens everything just sucks in every bit of light that you do have and helps you with a very clear picture now you you can't use it after legal shooting hours but or, or you can't see anything because it, it's not it's, there yeah there's no information there yeah but what information you do have is going to be as clear as it can be yeah so that's kind of how this works with the the new buck ops um so i mean i think you, you know you've got some people who are like well you know, people use that and you know go poach deer with it i'm like well people are going to do that with a spotting scope and a and a or a rifle scope and a spotlight yep. people are going to do the same thing yeah if you're going to outlaw you're going to outlaw yeah you know that that is what i like about this though people that don't know about the product or they haven't really put their hands on the product in that low light or anything because even look it's not like this a, a switch that is just hooked up to a Starlink that as soon as no. it hits uh shooting hours it shuts off it's not like that like you said generally when shooting time is over it's dark enough that you can't see, and so there's not a lot, uh, not enough light coming in hitting that sensor, anyways, to give you any kind of information Correct. to show those colors. So you're not ha- going to have that anyways. Uh, I mean, even like an overcast day, like out there right now. I mean, it's five sixteen, but I don't know what. I mean, just say it was shooting hours right now, or shooting hours is about to be up. Being overcast, you're probably not going to be able to see out there no. with this. You, you'll, it will help out some, but if it's not any light out there to give you any inf- any information, you're not going to get it yeah. either way. Yeah, but it is some cool stuff. It's y'all really have, cool. Like have, it's different. You have it's like a monocular, um, that's cool. And then you have the other. We have like a, the, a binocular kind of. Yeah. It's it's not. It's kind of hard to explain what it is, yeah. but it's it's kind of like a binocular. Um, then we have the crossbow scope, and then we have one that uh, the crossbow scope is the only one you could actually hunt with. Everything else is just like a binocular. A monocular, yeah. you just use it to scan and go. Okay, look that's a eight point not a 
yearling, you yeah. know, like you can tell uh, a little bit easier. And so uh, I, then we have one that's, I forgot the name of it. Sorry, Ryan, but uh, it's still, on, I think it's called the Night Stalker. Oh, yes. Or the I Night think, Walker. The Night Stalker, I night think. Stalker. But anyway, it's made so that you can find your way into the stand. Yeah. It shoots in black and white mode. And so it helps you pull any kind of light you got just to get into your, st- yeah. your spot. Yeah. You know, so that way you can kind of go in, no lights, you know, and, and get in without yeah. tripping over a branch or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. And anybody that's out there that's like, well, I thought you just said you can't see it in dark with it. Well, you're, it's a big difference seeing from me to you walking something like Correct. that or even from like here to one of these other desks versus even 20 yeah, yards that's a out great or point, whatever. Because like av- out past like five, six feet. Yeah. it's black yeah like it's, you can't see anything yeah. but you got to be kind of up close it's made so you can point it at the ground and yeah and then once you get up to your blind you can point at the blind you know and see yeah. what you're seeing so and that's big stuff yeah how many times have you seen people ride in like a hunting club being young or whatever someone will ride in on a full wheeler you're you know you've been out there since one o'clock and you're in the you're in the, st- the stand or blind or whatever and you're deer hunting and you see these deer over here or whatever it is and some your neighbor gets on this full wheeler and rides in at 3 30 and you don't have an hour and a half left to shoot in time anyways yep. and blows all the deer out that's right and he's like i don't ever see any dang deer in here mm-hmm. well not even just hating on the full wheeler riders but just you know busting them out at you know 10 minutes before daylight or shoot even an hour before daylight just being mm-hmm. quiet or- well like i've i've been a advocate and i kind of teach this at our at our little sportsman's camp that we do i've always been and and somebody taught me this but be able to do everything you need to do in the dark uh as a cameraman for me it was like you got to be able to find all your buttons got to know how yeah. to hook up stuff you need to be able to function fully in the dark whether you can see or not and so i i really try to teach that with my kids and and other kids that we have at the, that camp and um being able to get up there and knock your bow and mm-hmm. or knock your arrow and and hook on your release and and have everything set up, know where the hook is on your tree, be able to to do that, go through it enough in the daylight that when you get in that situation, it's like, yeah. you, if you were blind, it's just second nature, you yeah. know, just going off a of feel and just memory of where things are. Um, so, but, but what's funny about that is I've always just kind of preached that, but then as I've gotten older, I always used to be kind of like, Hey, I got, I got good eyes, you know, I can see in the dark and, um, as I've gotten older, that's gotten a little worse. <laughs> so stuff like this buck ops kind of makes me happy. I, I first hunt of the year this year in Mississippi, we've got a full moon and I'm tripping over stuff. And I'm like, what in the world? I've never been like this. Like yeah. trying to walk in on a Turkey, like what the heck is going on? So I I'm, I'm excited for like the, the night stalker, night walker, whatever we called it. But, yeah. but, uh, from buck ops, it's going to be cool. That is going to be awesome. And it's cool that, I mean, buck commander y'all, Y- y'all have created an awesome name for yourself. Um, it's y'all on YouTube. On, on, we are. We're on so YouTube, and, and we're back on Outdoor Channel too. Oh, really? So, yeah, oh, I didn't yeah, know that. The, this summer we start back up on Outdoor Channel, so we'll oh, have we'll be in hey. both places. So we just kind of wanted to, um, you know, we're good friends with everybody over at Outdoor Channel. And, yeah. Um, miss those guys, and yeah, uh, you know, they approached us this year about, hey, you know, could we get y'all back? Yeah, and. Uh, you know, we wanted to be able to keep our YouTube side because we've gotten a lot of a lot of young people from YouTube and yeah. a lot of people that didn't know about Buck Commander before. So we had a big audience over there, and so, um, but you know, there's still a huge audience over at yeah. Outdoor Channel. You know, everybody that watches that, and so, uh, yeah. So we just we worked out something, and and uh, we're back on Outdoor Channel. Dude, and, that's exciting. Yeah, I yeah, that's cool. We're doing ten yeah. episodes. Um, it'll start, I think, in July or August. I think we're we're running third and fourth quarter this year so nice uh, yeah we'll start that back up and and then we'll start pumping out the buck commander episodes on youtube about the same time so we'll have some episodes and there'll be different episodes yeah. so you won't be watching the same thing so right. i encourage you if you do like buck commander you go watch outdoor channel That's and awesome. and youtube because we're going to have different episodes on each one your full plate is overloading at this point isn't it man i i, I can't say that it, i it can get stressful but I've got a great team. Yeah. Um, several guys that I work with, and, and our video team, our content creators, our editors. Uh, you know, it's it. I'm no longer a one man band. I've got a yeah. bunch of guys that do an incredible job, and and uh, happy to 
be partnered up with them and that's awesome. and work with them they do an awesome job so the hunt the uh the kid the son and son-in-law hunt mm-hmm. down in louisiana this year what we filmed did y'all ever air that no that'll be on youtube this, oh really this fall yeah okay so what we've learned with like youtube we we did a we actually did some different stuff this year we did what we called a semi live um as well as episodes that we kind of take time to polish and get a good story and all that. And so there was a couple of different ways and YouTube's just, man, there's a lot of trial and error to figure out like what works best for your yeah. channel. And, you know, it's funny is that when we started doing YouTube, we just started just by putting our outdoor channel episodes on there and just, you know, seeing how they would do and everything. And, and we actually figured out like, Oh shoot, people just like our outdoor channel format. You know, where you got four segments and you get about 20 minutes of content. And so we, I think we got everybody kind of used to that. And so then we started doing this little semi-live where it's like 10 minutes and it was something that just happened like a week before. And those did okay. They did, they did, they did really good, but, but they didn't perform as well as our like really polished stories. And so we're going to do both this year. So oh, nice. we're actually increasing the workload a little bit more, but yeah. we'll have our are really polished stories and then we'll have our stuff that's in the moment too, yeah so. well you'll be able to pull the content from your semi lives like from what you do with that if you go with a semi live today and that was from last week or mm-hmm. whatever it was you'll be able to use some of that content what you're telling the story with now towards your big polish oh, episodes. absolutely absolutely so, so you're not having to shoot so, original content for everything no no it'll be so so basically this fall you'll be seeing some episodes that are being you know that happen in the fall but then you'll be seeing uh, part of the episodes, or, or at least the, the more polished episodes, will be stuff we're working on now from this previous fall. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll have a good mix of both. Yeah. Um, we, get, we get a lot of people that like to see it right now. You know, it's, yeah. if you kill a big deer, a lot of people want to see it right now. Yeah, well, the juries, they do that. They, they do, do. They do their, like, live turkey hunts. Yep. That's super yeah, cool. Yeah, I've, I've, I've gotten up at, you know, 7 o'clock in the morning and watched a couple of those. Yeah. So. And that's gotten you fired up. Oh, yeah. When I'm not able to turkey hunt and I can watch somebody else do it live, oh, heck yeah, I'm in. Yeah. So. You said a while ago you had some tips for some hunters of going out, uh, finding places to hunt, and stuff like that. Oh, sure. Yeah. So, like I said, I don't um, – I've never paid for a turkey hunt. I'll just go ahead and say that right now. That's awesome. Um, I don't use – struck commander is like the reason like i should get a free turkey i just don't i don't i don't believe in that i didn't pay for them before struck commander i don't pay for them now and that's not knocking anybody that sells you know turkey hunts that's awesome yeah like i'm just man there's enough people in the world that that yeah. don't really care yeah. about well turkeys, you know some so. people they're not in this industry and they have they save up their vacation time and their wife or, their, or, or not even their wife i don't even throw their wife under the bus they don't have the time to go and say, hey, I'm no. going to spend X amount of time going out and do this when I can just buy a $1,500, I don't even know how much you are, $1,500, yeah. $2,500 hunt in Texas or Kansas or wherever for two or three days. I'm going to go kill a Tom or go, go make sure you get on. Yeah, yeah, you know you're going to get on them. And that's perfectly fine. That's that's totally but fine. We're not talking about those guys. We're no. talking about I'm ta- I'm talking about the guys that, that are like, man, I, and I get this a lot. Like, man, how do you get? How do you land some of these spots? I got, I got guys locally. That, that have really gotten into turkey hunting and i'll be telling about like man yeah i just landed like three thousand acres and they're like what are you paying for all these leases I'm like i don't pay a thing i'm just a nice guy and i ask <laughs> you know and I, i'm just super honest and tell them what i'm doing it for and and you know taking my family out there and just like to turkey hunt and i always let them know before i come and when i leave yeah and then i help them out if they need help with their deer corn for the fall if they need work on tree stands, if they need just manual labor, if they need turkey breast, I'm happy to help them in any way I can. So that that's what I would tell you. Is, and, and it is a little different in Louisiana because you can go door knocking here and get shot. And, and you know, up in Nebraska, you can go door knock and, and people, oh, yeah, come on in. I got three gobblers in my back pasture. I hate them things. Yeah. Go, at, go get after it, you know, but you do it here, you know, knock on the wrong door your life will get shot so you got to be careful about it but um i use onyx you know I, the other day i found out a property owner where i heard some turkeys gobbling and i got the number called them let them know very polite hey this is jordan summit uh i leased the place across from you and uh i just 
heard some birds over there wanted to know if it was okay if i could maybe work out a time where i could come meet you and show you where i'd heard these birds and if i could ever get over there that'd be awesome you know and they were like oh yeah not a problem come That's on awesome. so you know it's it's way better to ask and get told no than to just try to slip over there yeah, like that, that. turkey hunters are probably the worst out of all of them about oh he's across that fence line we can go over there and yeah you know um yeah early in, in my in my years that was a lot more tempting and now that i've got two young boys you know i, I don't i don't want them don't doing play that. that game you know you can get really hurt doing it that way and it's a felony yeah so you don't definitely don't do that yeah. so um you know i always try to teach them the other day that one on onyx i had my oldest son Rhett with me i said let me show you how this works and so showed him and hey now we got another spot to turkey hunt that's awesome so just by being a polite nice guy and being honest and anyway so yeah that really works um if it can work in louisiana it can work anywhere oh yeah so this is there's not that many turkeys no there's not that many turkeys and there's not that many people that i would tell you that are totally willing to let you just have at it in their backyard yeah so those are good better turkey hunters but like i said they ain't let the ones that are not turkey hunting yeah they ain't letting you hunt their ground yeah not for the most part but you don't know if you don't ask just like mm-hmm. you said there's a lot more people out there with the proof in the pudding that would allow you to go hunt their place if you're just kind and you yeah. just ask absolutely just some good people out there yeah but don't come hunt my place you can't <laughs> hunt my place you're gonna get shot if you come <laughs> hunt Jordy's spot yeah all right so before we go i do want to hit up one thing i helped you with it the first year and i know you mentioned about the sportsman's camp while i go out to chioka are you doing that again this year absolutely uh yeah sportsman's camp um willie kind of created this thing about four or five years ago yeah um he wanted to create a camp where kids who may have not had the opportunities or anybody to teach them about hunting and fishing in the outdoors he wanted to create a place where they could come and learn all of that um i think i would have definitely done it when i was young for sure and uh so we do it for kids ages 13 to 18 uh, boys and girls and uh, we do it right here in calhoun louisiana and uh it's really really cool we we teach i mean literally everything hunting and fishing that i can think of but yeah we did blood trailing i remember did. that night that i went out there with them at like nine o'clock and they love, and I, that's always a big hit yeah, is blood trailing we 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 do turkey hunting duck hunting call all types of calling uh fishing casting uh boat work tree stand safety archery shotgunning uh rifle last year we had suppressed rifles out there oh, nice. which was really cool our friends from uh Sonster central came out and they did that oh, heck yeah so that was a lot of fun um and then you know all the duck commander guys come out we have a couple of the buck commander guys that come out um this year i got um uh, two ladies just just we haven't had that female mm-hmm. you know side of things in there we always have a bunch of girls that show up and so it's like man i need to i need to have some girls from the outdoor industry there are you so, allowed to say who yeah, I am. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna say it. So I'm hoping the solidifies are coming. Um, but they gave me. They gave me the uh, the com- confirmation the other day. So we got Sydney Wells, Tim uh, Wells' daughter. What? Yep, she's coming oh, this dude, year. That's awesome. So incredible archer, great hunter. Like probably in my opinion, one of the most legit girls uh, that hunts on social media. Yeah. And then we've got Maggie Williams. She was like Miss Ark Miss Teen Arkansas, yeah. maybe. I can't remember which, yeah. but. Uh, she actually did a podcast in this room, but anyway, um, yeah, Maggie Williams is coming and then I'm working on a couple more that I won't say yet, but, um, so we're trying to kind of get the girl side of things in there and and we have all the duck commander guys and like I said, the buck commander guys, but we kind of want to have some female presence there. Yeah. We, uh, we really enjoy, you know, teaching all these kids and, and it's awesome. You'll have kids out there that have literally never caught a fish. Yeah. And by the end of that camp, I mean, we had one boy a couple years ago. He, you, you, when you met him, you would be like, this kid doesn't stand a chance at lasting this week, being in the outdoors and learning about all this stuff. And man, he was catching bass by the end of the week, casting like really, really cool stuff. Another kid, uh, you know, again, city boy, never, his parents signed him up for it because they wanted him to get outside, play video games all the time. And, uh, so he was one of our ones that didn't really want to be there but by the end of it he was thanking us and he's actually been every year since oh wow and so you know he came in didn't know anything about archery ends up winning our little archery tournament that we do at the end of the week so 
a lot of kids show up and they they find out they're really good at things that they'd never tried yeah and so uh and they have a whole new interest and and not just that but they meet a lot of really cool people um they make lifelong friends and they get a good dose of jesus when they're there yeah so that's 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 kind of the you know obviously our foundation for all of it is is not the outdoors but it's jesus yeah and so willie designed this thing just beautifully and and i i'm very thankful that i get to kind of help direct it um we have an awesome team uh we eat really good so if you're thinking about coming it's not just your normal camp Mm -hmm. food like we we bring out the big dogs when it's time to eat those deer egg rolls oh yeah deer egg rolls still like man we we do we do it right man on the eating but uh but anyway yeah it's a fun camp uh registration is open if you're if you're interested or if you have a kid uh that that needs to come to it man we we have a good time i think our camp this year is going to be june 23rd through the 29th so the last week of june um registration go to camp chioka.org uh it's open we're taking people so not capping it yet but we do have a full we do have a full uh crew um so we probably will be you know closing down registration here in the next few weeks yeah i would imagine so um if you if you haven't signed up i highly suggest you do it and at least give it a try it's it's a lot of fun yeah i'm gonna try to edit this one i may again i may be in the hospital for the next few days with with my wife and soon to be little girl but uh it is tuesday april 9th and so you got a few weeks left yeah um for that how many kids are you, do y'all so every y'all so the very first year we did it, we had 12 right. we had 12 boys sign up because yeah. uh, we we started the camp like we came up with the idea like in june and then august you know just we didn't have that many sign up the next year we doubled so we did like 28 and then uh the next year we doubled that so we were like right at 50 and then right now i think we're sitting at like 70 so which is great i'm i'm super happy with that just, uh, we also don't like to you know i don't want it to be 150 200 no, kids no. um not that i don't want more kids there yeah but the big part of this camp is that because it, a lot of this stuff is really hands-on you know you're not sitting in a class learning you know all those things that you're having to do in school you're out there hands-on learning how to do yeah fishing knots we do a survival class you know they're learning how to build fires they're learning how to tie tourniquets you know a lot of really cool stuff so all of it's hands-on and um when you get you know a lot of kids it it, it just kind of can get muddy where it's yeah you may not be able to give every kid that full it's not as intentional as as it could be that's right so we try to keep it kind of small um manageable i would say so but it's still enough kids there that you feel like oh i'm at a i'm at a fun camp you know so and we have all the other things that normal summer camps have too. So we've got a swimming pool, we've got a lake, we've got, you know, air conditioned cabins. That, thank God we actually gymnasium. have air conditioning in the yep. cabins now. So we, yeah, air conditioned cabins. I can't say that I'm for that being in the outdoors, but hey, if that helps you uh, sleep at night, that's cool. Come on. It is good, especially here in Louisiana. Oh, I, get, I, I personally am going to sleep in air, but oh, I think yeah. everybody should have to do a. A night or two of nowhere and y'all allow them to camp or something don't they yeah it, we we have a uh we we didn't do it last year only because we kind of ran out of time but usually every year we'll have one night that will will allow everybody you know who whoever wants to sign up can go camping yeah. and so we'll have tents out there and we'll cook out there for them and teach them how to build a fire and all that kind of stuff and so we'll do that and uh that's always a big big thing so we do bow fishing too yeah so that's that's another big attraction when kids love doing the bow fishing and so that's that is kind of the difficult thing when you do a sportsman's camp or a hunting camp no you're not actually hunting anything we're teaching you everything to take into hunting season but bow fishing is pretty cool because it's really the only thing you can do that time of year um you know in the woods so we we take some of the older kids not everybody gets to do it but the older kids, uh, yeah, we'll take them bow fishing. So. What a saddle stuff? Y'all, y'all have any of that? We have not done any saddle stuff. Have y'all thought so, about I mean, it? You yet? may have just signed yourself up for saddle class. I mean, there's no telling what else I just signed myself up for, too. <laughs> but uh, no, I know I didn't get to come last year. I don't remember what it was. I didn't get to help last year, but um, it was. I it's know cool. I, I always fun. appreciate guys. And this thing, too, for anyone asking, um, 
you know there is a cost with it and all that but it, it, it really all the money goes right back into the yeah camp chioka yeah um it's not anything uh, duck commander's not making money off of it yeah. I'm, I'm not willie's not like this is all for camp chioka and everybody that comes out to this is a volunteer yeah so that's what i appreciate about it most is that kind of my job is to organize it um create some of the the categories and the classes and the get the seminars going with with our speakers and um you know it, it's just a it's a really cool time and honestly i would say that it has probably done more for me than it has for all the couple hundred kids that have been over the years yeah so it's it's really special that's how that stuff usually works out yeah yeah what it's all, awesome i love it what all buck guys you're coming out this year so we'll have Tombo for sure. Oh, Lord. Uh, yep, Tombo will be there. Tombo's always the big hit, man. He, Dude, he's he, so much fun. He's a big kid, so he yeah. fits right in. He and so I've, I've actually had a few times where I was like, hey, you need to sit down and listen to this speaker because you could probably learn something from it. But You met real quick. You remember <laughs> we went to uh, Iron Cactus oh, after yeah. the day, and he went. He's like, hey, can we have some of that ultimate queso? It's essentially like it's a Iron Cactus is a Mexican establishment here and right outside West Monroe, and it's right up the road from the camp. Well, they had like their loaded meat and pepper, whatever mm-hmm. it is, uh, queso dip. Man, we're going. I think we were waiting on your wife or something like that to get there, and we're sitting there eating, and that big bowl comes out, and he's just hoarding it to himself. He's like, wow. oh, I didn't know y'all wanted some, and we had to order another one. I'm like, bruh, <laughs> you really are a child. Oh, he is. He's a big kid. He's he's might be my favorite buck, man, just because he is just so – it's, it's it's just a he's a it's a brother thing yeah you know? he's fun so he's a lot of fun so we'll have he'll be there then willie will be there of course um on the duck side jace Cy, phil martin um i'll be there obviously um and then i'm trying to think who else i've got coming i'm trying to talk uh ryan Langerhands into coming uh, i think adam laroche is committed to coming this year oh nice um of course we have maggie williams and then uh sydney wells she's coming uh, so we've we've got a pretty good little crew, and I'm still it's working loaded. on getting more people. So like gotcha. I said, it's all volunteer. So, you know, unfortunately, I can't pay just anybody just to come out, yeah. but I wish I could because I would have all kinds of people there. So we try to switch it up every year too yeah. and have something different so that, you know, when you come to that camp year one, you know, by year three or four, after you get done doing it, it's not the same exact camp you did year right. one. So. I thought you were going to say Eva Shockey or someone like that. <laughs> Talking about the girls. But no, Sydney, I follow her on Instagram. She's as wild as her dad. Oh, man. I, I did tell her when I met her, I said, hey, I'm really excited you're coming to this camp. But for real, I'm like a huge fan of your dad. <laughs> it's like, awesome. It's like, um, you think you can get your dad to come out here too? Let's I asked her. She said she was going to gonna talk to him. So if I can get Tim out there. Oh, dude. Which, what's crazy is like, I don't know if the kids even really know about, oh, I think wow. like people your our age know about him, but yeah. like if these kids would pay attention, like that's the dude you need to be watching. He's the he goat, is the man. man. Yeah. There's not, there's no one else alive or who, who has ever been alive. He will go down. I'm not saying he'll be as big as Fred bear, but what he does, there's no other human that's oh, ever done anything like him. Unbelievable. It's like so me, much respect for him. Yes, yeah, well, me and you go dove hunting with our Benellis, and we're like, "Man, we killed five doves today. Like, we we missed a couple." And he's like, "Yeah, well, I killed my limit plus yours plus yours plus yours with just a flu flu arrow and a yeah, compound and blow dart and a blow or blow dart yeah, gun." Any, exactly. any guy that shoots a grizzly bear with a blow dart, bruh, you got my respect. So. Mm, I need. I forgot about that. He did shoot a bear. Yeah, with a blow dart. Was it a grizzly or was it a black bear that he I, shot? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I ain't shooting. It it's a bear. I mean, it's a freaking bear. <laughs> yeah, I'm out on that. I was talking with Craig, and uh, I have not watched it yet. I'm sorry. I'm a terrible friend. But y'all have a new film or something. Yeah, yeah. So we we just dropped a, a – I haven't ever really done a film before. I mean, I guess we did the Duck Commander DVDs back in the day. But on Duck Commander's YouTube, I know this doesn't make sense, but we were trying to kind of get the word out there and promote Strut a little bit. We do have a new um, film or movie, I guess you could call it. Uh, we called it Legacy. Um, it is kind of the origin story of Strut Commander. Um, I don't want to say it's like my origin story. There's a little bit about me in there, but it's just kind of my take on what hunting has done for me and my family and um, kind of, you know, my thoughts on, on, you know, the legacy you leave behind for the next generation. And so, anyway, we, we ha- I had some decent thoughts, and 
kind of set it on camera and then we kind of went from there and so we partnered up with our friends from burris optics and and uh they're presenting this film and so it's now on youtube on the duck commander channel so oh, nice it's pretty cool so if there's a link below or anything, yes yeah I'll, that, yeah I'll, I'll link i'll link it to that yeah yeah check well. it out it's it's uh it was a special so, film Le- legacy film is that it's, what it's called uh legacy a struck commander story i think okay but it's on the it's the newest video on the duck commander channel right now oh, so, so if you go to on, duck commander and find go to it. duck commander's youtube channel and okay. you'll find it it's called legacy nice yeah so again i'm sorry i've not watched it yet. it's okay i will it's okay yeah it's it's like i said i'm a little biased it's got a lot of my boys in it and it's it's cool to watch because it's so many that the guy who put it together jared uh he does a great job he does all of our duck commander and struck commander fin commander he does all of that production and he did a really good job with it and um i appreciate him like it, it was neat he went and got into the archives and just dug up a bunch of old footage oh and, wow and uh put it all together and it it it's it it really hit me in a in a soft spot just watching it so the eyes water oh up a yeah bit. yeah so it did it was cool to see that and um you know kind of when we when we talked about making the film was you know it's more of a tribute to phil i mean i wouldn't say phil's just in it a ton but phil is the reason that i'm even here today yeah um when i say that it means that I, I was not a hunter growing up. I did not hunt at all. I was I played sports and video game nerd. And then when I got into college, I kind of got into hunting and fishing and, you know, trying to get in with that crowd and just be outside. My wife or, or my girlfriend at the time, you know, she loved to be outside and fish. And so a lot of her dates were spent on the river fishing. And so anyway, as I got into all that, and then I got into camera work, and then I got into watching those duck commander vhs tapes i was like man this is cool like i would love to do that one day and so that that was kind of the kickoff and i I won't say a whole lot more than that that was that's kind of a little bit of my background and if it wasn't for phil going out you know being the guy that he is and having the dream about the duck call and loving jesus he wouldn't have influenced somebody like me yeah and so i wouldn't be here today talking about turkeys and talking about a film that's kind of about my story yeah um without phil robertson so i'm forever grateful for him and um yeah anyway you're not the only one though like the blind oh my gosh if people haven't watched the blind dude it's incredible it really is like you think duck dynasty is good and you think the old even buck commander but the old duck commander and buck commander vhs and then go into the dvds and all that you think those are good which they are you go watch the blind and you get a completely different perspective from anything oh, totally. that you've ever seen before when it comes to the Robertson family. Yeah, totally. It's wild. So you're that's not the only notes. one that's thankful for that cat. That mm-hmm. He's a, yeah, he's done a lot for a lot more people. It's he, crazy. Yeah. So how can people find you if they want to follow you, check you out, that kind of stuff? Yeah. Uh, I'm on Instagram at Jordy summit, J O R D Y S U M M I T T. Um, obviously Facebook. I don't do a, whole lot on facebook but i try to keep the the gram updated as i as i go through the turkey season so i'm kind of behind right now because it's been a it's been a very blessed last week and a half yeah and so i've got enough stuff that i can be posting pretty much daily so well you got we got some cool episodes coming too yeah you got that new body that new fx6 you're ready have you you taken it on a a whole new podcast for that no we're not we gotta get out of here I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, this man. I enjoyed it. I told you we'll be in and out in 30, 40 minutes. Well, yeah, there's a on. reason why I'm not on Duck Call Room or any of these other podcasts because I get long-winded. That's so. okay. I'd much rather have somebody on this long-winded this than somebody <laughs> that, that's not. So we'll do part two some other time. Yeah. I, we'll do that after I kill a turkey. There we no, go. I'll probably we'll not because it'll be next year. Talk. <laughs> well. All right. Thank you for coming on. Everybody, thank you all for listening. Again, check out Spotted Dog Sporting Goods. For all of your outdoor needs and then strutcommander.com go check them out the boys know what they're doing thank y'all all right see you bro see you. bye everybody later